The most surprising thing that has come out of publishing this book is that everyone has a story and everyone is looking to share it. I'm, I'm amazed by the people that have reached out, people that I've known for years that have disclosed things that I never knew about them because they weren't comfortable or they, they felt too vulnerable. This book is our heart on paper. It is vulnerable. It is raw. And I wanted that out there so other people know it's okay to talk about what they need to talk about too and it's okay to get help and, and talk to people and share your stories because we're all just doing life the best we can and if we can share stories and help each other out, I think it can really make a difference in the world. When my husband was diagnosed, he was 30 and I was a caregiver then at the age of 28 and it was certainly not something we expected in our late 20s and early 30s, much less our third year of marriage. Um, I will tell you that the struggles of doing this as a young adult, I think, are one, the people around us, our, our friends, our peer group, they're, this is not a common thing that happens. They didn't quite know how to help us, but our friends called and were so kind to say, we don't know how to help you, but please tell us and we will help you. This isn't something that's very common at this age at all. Tom had a rare testicular cancer called a germ cell tumor, so his cancer was actually located within his chest and was touching his heart and lung and the size of a baseball when we found it, and it was considered a late stage three diagnosis, so we had to do very aggressive treatments, which included 20 chemo treatments all in the hospital, followed by a massive surgery to remove the tumor. The thing I would say about our age and our cancer diagnosis is cancer doesn't care how old you are, how young you are, what your situation is. Um, cancer can happen to anyone, as unfortunate as that is. And I will tell you, I don't think it's any more or less fair that it happens to people at different times in their lives. I think what matters is how you handle a situation that's handed to you, how you become better from it, and how you help other people that are going to be in that situation or have been in that situation. So growing up, I was fortunate enough to have a sister who was about two and a half years older than me. We fought like cats and dogs, but just as quickly would stand up and defend each other. We're always uh, challenging each other and, and trying to outdo the other one, and we have a really strong relationship. And it is really hard, I would say. My sister and I talk every single morning on our commutes to work. And when somebody gets diagnosed with cancer, the whole family gets diagnosed. And this was just as hard on my sister and brother-in-law and our families and um, my husband's siblings as well because the whole family really does get diagnosed and it really can hurt people to the core. And everyone has such a profound want to help you and make it better for you. And unfortunately, sometimes the answer is there's nothing anyone can do. We have to just get through treatment today. We just have to get home. Um, so that can be a real challenge for families, but I was fortunate enough to be raised by two great parents. I have a wonderful sister, a great support network, and then my husband's family is equally as wonderful. I was blessed to have a great mother and father-in-law and awesome sister and brother-in-laws and nieces and nephews. I absolutely love growing up in Milwaukee. It is, to me, the greatest city on earth. I remember moving to college and I went to Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio, and the first couple weeks I said, you know, something's just strange about this place. And I realized quickly it's because there's no lake there. The Ohio River just wasn't doing it for me. And coming home and the air is fresher and everything is so accessible and so easy and there's so much culture here in Milwaukee. Um, you know, you go traveling and you go to college and you talk about the fact that, oh, well, there's, a, there's an ethnic festival every weekend in Milwaukee. Is that not something that happens in every city? Wait, you can't just go down to the lakefront? Um, this is truly my home. I absolutely adore Milwaukee. I love coming home. I love spending time here. Um, and I just think there's so much culture and opportunity and life in Milwaukee. And it's always changing and it's always challenging itself. And I really, really love that about the city. I think my greatest fear is to not leave this world better than we found it. And I really do try to find ways to give back. The, the book and writing the book was a way for me to give back. Being able to connect with people as a result of the book and our situation has been so fulfilling. And it really has meant something to me that we could take this and make this something that uh, can make the world a little bit better or help one person. I joked with my husband after we, we launched the book, somebody had reached out and said they had really made a change in their life that is for the better because of the book and they explained what they were doing and why and I looked at him and I said then this book was all worth it because I had real concerns and real fear about publishing the book because it was so personal and it was so out there for the world to read and I had real fear that we might be judged or people might feel differently about us or look at us different and I really think that any fear you can turn into a positive as well and I really do want to leave this world better than we found it. So my husband Tom is the best husband in the world. I'm so fortunate. We met when I was 18 and he was 20. We worked at a restaurant in Milwaukee. He's a Marquette grad. 
and he tries to make me laugh every day and I always tell people he wakes up every morning and wants to try to make me happier than he made me the day before and you just can't be anything but thankful for that.